Now, how about you? Were you shy before you became the network queen? <laughs> no, <laughs> never. <laughs> no, you, so you no, always. I'm an extrovert through and through, but oh, but as okay. I say, you know, just because I am, and yes, half the population are like me and extroverted, the other half are not. And a lot of, but, you know, one thing I'll say is, you know, the most amazing entrepreneurs, Sir Richard Branson, for instance, he's an introvert, you know, he he's actually, he's actually quite shy. You'd never think it because he puts himself out there, but he does it for the sake of his brand, yeah. you know, and a lot of other entrepreneurs who are amazing, they're super successful, and they're introverted. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, we're just all different. We're, you know, we right. we make up different, different attributes in each other. Um, and, you know, but some of the most successful entrepreneurs are introverted, you know. And now here is singer-songwriter, broadcaster, audio-video artist, entertainment agent, and your host. It's the master storyteller himself, James Kevin O'Connor. Hey, 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 it's a beautiful day. Oh, yeah, and it's time to go across the pond. Haven't done this in such a long time. And uh, a dear friend who I haven't connected with in quite a while, she's the founder of IntroBiz. She's a human connector, an author, a mentor, a TEDx speaker, investor, she creates and connects communities for global opportunities for SMEs, entrepreneurs, and business owners to grow their network and business. So you better strap up your seatbelts because we're taking a ride today across the Atlantic Ocean from the Music City to the United Kingdom to hang out with Tracy Carell. So Tracy, catching up. It's been a while. It's so good to see you. Welcome to podcasting your global career. Thank you very much. Great to ha uh, great to be on here, James. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we haven't talked in a while, and uh, you know, it's so good to reconnect with you and see what you're doing with Intro Biz. I've been watching all your posts and seeing how things are are really really taking off, and you you continue to franchise the network and all the things you're doing. So what's most exciting in your life right now um, on the business side? Well, there's a lot happening, actually, to be honest. So we've got a couple of new projects that we're doing. We've got a conference. We do business exhibitions every year. Um, I didn't do one this year because we were focusing a lot on tweaking things, changing the processes, improving the processes for the franchise. Um, we're in the process, process of going to be launching Youth Biz. So... Just to tell you a little bit about Youth Biz, it's going to be a young entrepreneurs training academy, but not actually necessarily entrepreneurs for youngsters, really, um, so that we can literally teach them how to network so that they can create more opportunities for themselves. Because a lot of the youngsters today, they are not, um, you know, they're, they're not great at communicating a lot of youngsters. They're either messaging on WhatsApp or texting each other or Facebook Messenger and a lot of these kids don't know how to start a conversation um, to, you know, to potentially have their own business or to start a conversation, you know, to create new friendships and new connections, especially in business networking. So I just felt that this was a great opportunity for, for IntraBiz to teach the youth how to network. And obviously what it will do for them, it will make them more business savvy, more communicative, more confident and it will give them um, more employability if they don't go down the entrepreneurial route and they want to be just employed in a company. That's going to have a positive impact for the business economy, because if the company employs them and you've got two people and one of them knows how to network and say they're being interviewed, one of them knows how to network. The other one doesn't. They've got the same skill sets, the same qualifications, the same attitude. But who are they going to employ? They, you know, the companies are usually going to employ the, the one that knows how to network and that has already built a network before they've even uh, left school or college. So that's going to be really, really positive for companies. And then it gives them the confidence to send those youngsters out, how to, you know, and to go networking to find them new opportunities. This sounds like such a great idea because, um, you know, being in this space that I've been in since 2015 as a podcaster, I've seen, you know, I've had a lot of young people on my show and, you know, it seems as though the art of conversation it has been dying a slow death. 
And, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, all these apps, you know, they're so convenient, yet um, it makes us very lazy in our approach to really um, have an introspective and re really interesting conversation with somebody and learn something and take away something from it. So, um, you know, developing that acumen in someone, I think, is such a valuable tool. So how'd you come up with this? So were you just watching the landscape. I don't know how it is over in uh, in Great Britain, but um, over here in the U.S., things are way too fast. I mean, I just cycled through, uh, you know, a hundred posts, and and it took me like you know forty seconds to to do that. It's it's crazy, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I just noticed that a lot of youngsters, they, they've they been, you know, since COVID, they've been suffering with their mental health. Um, a lot of people have been like little hermits. They don't want to go anywhere. Um, you know, that, you know, half the population is introverted anyway. So they're a little bit shy and they don't want to be in big crowds of people or they feel daunted by walking into a room full of people. So I wanted to create a safe environment of belonging, um, but also to uh, to connect them all together, the youngsters so that they build their network, but at the same time we educate them. And I am I came up with the idea, actually, I'll never forget the date, it was the 22nd of January, 2021. So this has been a long time coming, to be honest. Um, and one of my friends, Sabrina, came online with her, her children and they're all entrepreneurs and they're aged between eight and 21. And they're all absolutely super kids. Um, they've got their own books, they're really inspirational. And every and I said, come on, bring them on and let's introduce them to everyone. And when they had their two minute pitch to say who they are and what they did, all my members were, you know, who were online that that morning were blown away with them, which gave me the idea. I went, hang on a minute. I said, Sabrina, you've given me a great idea. And I shared it with everyone. I said, what do you think, guys? And everyone said, amazing idea. So I had this idea, you know, quite a while ago, you know, it was over two years ago. And I've, you know, I've done quite a bit of research, done a lot um, over the last couple of years, but not really acted on getting it launched. So um, in the next couple of weeks, we will be launching Youth Biz. We're working very hard behind the scenes to to obviously sort that out. And I've recorded um, a lot of videos for them to buy my online networking course if they want to do the, the online. But also I will be doing um, live, in, you know, uh, uh, over Zoom um, networking as well. So that's super exciting because for me, this is my legacy impact project. I want to be able to impact people for the good, for the good of the people and for the good of businesses. Uh, but obviously when I leave this earth, uh, you know, that that's my legacy really is, uh, is, is training people on how to do it the right way. That's fantastic. Congratulations. And let me ask you, what is the um, age range that this encompasses? Well, we're aiming at 16 to 24 year olds. However, if, for instance, say there's um, a, a business owner or a parent that has an entrepreneurial child and they know that they're entrepreneurial and they could be aged 10 or 12, listen, we'll take them because, you know, at the end of the day, we don't want to we don't want to put any limits on it. That's the general target audience that we're aiming for is before they leave school or college. But if there's some youngsters that want to come on board and they, you know, they're really keen to learn from a younger age or slightly older, of course, we'll take them because, you know, we will be selling our courses. I'm, I'm starting a new course now on October the 14th on Zoom, um, which is, uh, you know, in person online. Um, I love doing the in person online or in person face to face. Um, but um, because obviously that that's that's more magical. But if people do want to buy the online course, and do it in their own time, they can access the online as well, which is great, you know, the online course. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really excited about it, you know, because I, as I say, I want to create an impact for for the youth. Do you feel that a lot of these kids um, just got so shy um, because of the pandemic? You know, you might have a person who's already shy, a child or something, and then the pandemic like exacerbated that situation by like now I've got no shot at breaking out of my shyness because I, it took almost two years of my life in that development stage, especially like, you know, when they're 14 to like 16. Yeah. Um, so do you, you think, do you think um, that this sort of like held a lot of kids back from any, any progressive growth they may have had? Yeah, hundred percent, which is another reason why I want to do it, you know, and, and, you know, for those youth or anybody that's out there at the moment, if you are a bit introverted or you feel, I'll just give you a little tip. If you feel a bit 
daunted or nervous of walking into a room full of people, whether it be a family party or a networking event or a conference or anywhere where you're going to learn or even in the classroom. Just think of this. Look yourself in the mirror and say, actually, I've got this. I'm good at what I do. I have a lot of knowledge to give. I had a, I have a lot of value to give. And now it's my duty to pass on that knowledge and to share with others what, what it is that they know and what they're all about. And I think when you flip the mindset from, oh, my God, fear, you know, the fear of dread, change it to you're there to serve and to, to give, you know, it's your duty to serve and to help and to, you know, to share your knowledge with other people, then um, it's a slightly different mindset and it shifts you away from yourself to serving others. And when you can do that, um, it's so much easier because I used to do um, a lot of talks in the clubhouse when clubhouse first came out in the pandemic. And I used to do networking for introverts rooms. And when people used to come in, they really, you know, sort of like used to get really scared of networking. And that was one of the first things that I said to them as, you know, think of it as your duty. You know, you've got a lot of value. You are here. You're amazing at what you do. And you not, now you need to share it with the world, you know. Now, how about you? Were you shy before you became the network queen? <laughs> no, never. <laughs> no? You, so you no, always... I mean, I I'm an extrovert through and through, but oh, but as okay. I say, you know, just because I am, and yes, half the population are like me and extroverted, the other half are not. And a lot of, but, you know, one thing I'll say is, you know, the most amazing entrepreneurs, Sir Richard Branson, for instance, he's an introvert, you know, he's, he's actually, he's actually quite shy. You'd never think it because he puts himself out there, but he does it for the sake of his brand, yeah. you know, and a lot of other entrepreneurs who are amazing, they're super successful, and they're introverted. It's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, we're just all different. We're, you know, we right. we make up different, different attributes in each other. Um, and you know, but some of the most successful entrepreneurs are introverted, you know. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, true. Um, it, it does think... stop their success for sure. Yeah, I think when people get that, you know, get pushed a little bit sometimes, you know, to grab the microphone and just be brave, they they something trick you know clicks inside of them and they go wow i discovered that i was afraid of nothing all this time and i i was really really able to find myself by uh just coming out of my shell you know and, and do more so i i always like when i see that experience happen to someone you know oh yeah absolutely and and i actually uh, not the weekend just gone the weekend before i went to a tony robbins event the upw um unleash the power within oh it wow Incredible. Tony Robbins is just off the scale. I think every person on the planet needs to hear about Tony Robbins um, or hear him speak or go to one of his conferences because they they are life changing and transformational. And the first day we were there in the evening, just before everybody left, he psyched us all up and got us in the state of walking on hot coals. Now, did I ever think I would walk on hot coals? Not a chance in hell. Did I ever think I would do that? OK, but I did it. You know, and he literally gets you into this state. And actually, when you do it, you get yourself all like I was really nervous standing in the queue thinking, but I thought I'm not going to be I'm not going to not do it. I'm not going to go back to Cardiff and say I didn't walk on hot coals, guys. It was there. The opportunity was there. I I didn't do it, though, because I was scared. Yeah, I'm like, no, I'm doing this, you know, so determination, focus, change your mindset, get into a state where you are, you know, you're just so determined to do it. And forget about, you know, focus on something else positive rather than the negative scariness of it, if you like. And it was incredible. And when we did it, I did it with two girlfriends who I actually happened to meet and get along with, um, Erica and uh, one of my other friends. And it was ah unbelievable. We were so chuffed when we did any, it. You know, any, it uh, any bruises or burns on your feet after that? The only thing I had was a little bit of the, um, not a flame, it was just the, obviously the spark yeah. had come up onto my foot and it, it looked like it was just like little dots of, you know, like when you get like little blood things, yeah. you know, like, you know, where you've had a baddie, as I call it, you know, where you've bled and then it's the scab, very, very thin bits of scab for about, and it literally just came off yesterday. Um, but it, it was a slight little itchy irritation for about 20 minutes and then it was fine afterwards. And, but it was, was so the, worth uh... it because, you know, it just goes to show that you can change your state literally like that and it yeah. was brilliant and i just think it was it was phenomenal so it's uh, incredible what the mind can do you know once you learn how to control it it's it's kind of kind of crazy 
Let me yeah. ask you uh, a bit about IntroBiz, uh, your company that connects people all over the world and, and really big all through Europe and, and the UK. And um, I know you, you've you done like stadiums in the past and everything. So so where are we with that? How are things going with IntroBiz? And can you tell people a little bit about exactly what it is? Yeah, of course. I mean, we we are a, a networking and connections agency. And what I mean by connections agency, yes, we put on networking events for our clients and visitors to come along and they visitors will come along and they can try a couple of events before they decide to buy and, and join the network. But after that, it's a private members club where business owners come together. We put on events for them in hotels, restaurants and bars so that they can network and connect with each other. And obviously they can they can grow their network and potentially get more leads for their business and build win-win relationships. Um, we do them in person and we do them online. We never used to do online, obviously pre-pandemic, but since the pandemic, we now actually do more events online than we do in person, um, to be honest with you. Um, I have franchises, so I have three franchises, one in Sweden, one in West Wales and one in Bristol. I'm in talks with other people at the moment about doing an intrabiz in in their own areas. Um, and the other thing that we we do as a business is we do business exhibitions uh, every year um, where we get speakers and people can have a stand, you know, at an exhibition space. They can have their space. So they come together and we get thousands of people through the door. We have speakers on and we have seminars on throughout the day. So we get really amazing entrepreneurs. We've had the most amazing entrepreneurs, people like Grant Cardone in the US, Lord Sugar, who's um, been on the, you know, he was the apprentice leader. Um, we've had Sharon Lecter, who's been my business mentor. She's the co-author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So the lovely Sharon has come over to the UK as well. Baroness Michelle Moan, you know, a whole host of people um, that have come. But also um, doing them in person, that's when people connect and really do business. And then obviously on the other side, we do the networking training. Um, I've now obviously launching my courses and we do business retreats. So some of the business retreats that we've done is I've had the absolute privilege and honour uh, to have been invited to Necker Island with Sir Richard Branson um, for the Premier Live Necker Cup. So the guys at Premier Live, I connected to those um, a few years ago, back in 2019, and I had the, you know, they're very, very lucky, um, very grateful and very humble to have been invited there. And I took, but I also took clients for the experience. And off the back of going to NECA, we ended up taking clients on Sir Richard's birthday bash for his supposedly 70th birthday. But because of the pandemic, it got postponed until last summer. So July 2022 is we took clients and it was it was then for his 72nd birthday. Um, we were on the wow. cruise ship with him and his family, friends, colleagues, and and obviously other guests as well. So that was a phenomenal experience. So, so tell yeah. us a little bit about being in the um, company of Sir Richard, uh, and and you know that experience on Necker Island. What was it like? Oh, I mean, Necker Island is is like a, a an entrepreneur's playground. It's just it's stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, the the connections that were there. There was about one hundred and eighty people. Uh, on the island and we um we stayed actually on the sea dream ship it was a, a really nice old fashioned motor cruise so it was beautiful um and it held about 40 50 people so quite a few of us stayed on there um and then we used to go to necker every day which was great it's more expensive if you actually stay on necker um so we went and it was the the people were amazing and i've got to say the people richard's an amazing human and his family they're all really gracious they're very humble um, because they're very, very wealthy, you'd never think so. Um, if you met them, they don't, you know, they don't look down on anybody. They they don't think they're better than anyone else. They're just super, super nice humans. Um, and all the people who work for him, they're all very nice people, very friendly, very welcoming. They're there to serve. So they they are really nice, um, nice people. And also some of Richard's friends were, again, su super successful entrepreneurs, but really, really nice people that are surrounded by him. Um, I think he attracts the nice people because he's nice. And yeah. I think uh, like attracts like, isn't it? It seems like it's one of those once in a lifetime uh, experiences you never forget, you know? Absolutely. I mean, and and I always say to people is this, you know, people say, oh, I'd love to go there. And I say, well, you you ought to go soon, you know, because you never know. We we never know how long we're on the earth for. Yeah. Um, maximize your opportunities now while we're all alive. 
um, yeah. go for it, you know. So if anyone's interested, please, please reach out to me and I can I can do that and make that happen for you. Awesome. Awesome. So um, you, you've got a lot of things going on here. You, you're very busy with all of these exciting things, with all your businesses and everything. What does Tracy do these days for herself? when she wants to just back off a of business and chill and have some fun. What are you doing for yourself? Well, there's a lot I love to do. I love to go cycling. Um, so I get on my bike and I, it's usually around the coast because I live in a coastal town. I'm living in a lovely place um, in South Wales called Lantwit Major. And it's a beautiful part of the world. Um, there's a, boat, uh, a beach down the road. And there's many beaches along the way, which is great, you know, all within sort of like a, a 10, 15 mile radius. Um, so I do go out on my bike quite a lot. I love to have spa day, so I love to go for a massage, especially if I've got an, uh, a bad neck ache or I'm just really achy and my body is aching like crazy from working. So I, I love to do that. Socializing with friends and family and my my daughter and my son and my parents. Love to go out for dinner. And I love the cafe culture. So I do lots of coffee and cake. Um, but I'm trying to eat more healthy at the moment. So I'm trying to not be on the cake. Um, so- <laughs> you look great. You look like you've been working out. Yeah. Well, I, I, as I say, I do. And I walk my dogs every day, you know, so I walk my dogs at least twice a day, sometimes three times, depending wow. on how busy I am, because I do think it's so important. You know, I usually start work fairly early in the morning. I'm um, usually on LinkedIn and social media. It's sort of like between seven and half seven. Um, yeah. so I don't do a normal nine to five job. Um, I don't think as an entrepreneur, you ever completely switch off. Um, I, well, actually, I, I tell a lie. I would think cr- probably Christmas is about the only time I completely switch off. But even when I go on holiday, I still, unfortunately, look at my emails and social media. I can't get out of it. But it, but I love what I do, James. I absolutely love my work. Um, I don't think of it as work. It's part. It's my lifestyle. You know, it's in my DNA. I love people. I love connecting people. I love teaching, connecting, hosting and educating uh, people. And it's, it's just, for me, it's, it's in my DNA. It's just what I love, you know? That's fabulous. Yeah. That's the way it should be. And I agree with you. The entrepreneur is just, um, you know, there is no punching in and punching out. It's just, you work until you're tired and then you work again. (laughs) Absolutely. But I love to travel as well. So, you know, I travel with work. Um, so last year I went away a few times. I, I did obviously Miami and the Bahamas and Mexico, Cozumel. Um, with Sir Richard's cruise, I also did a women's retreat um, with my one of my really good friends, Dawn, and we had a business together that we created in the pandemic. Iwow, inspirational women of the world, and we took a load of women to Morocco, and um, we also fundraised for the poor women of the Atlas Mountains to set up a women's cooperative where they could set up a business and it was attached to the school. And that was a a very wonderful, humbling experience. I I literally cried because they brought out the whole village and they put on a massive spread of food for us. And there was only nine of us there. It was Dawn, myself and seven clients. And we were, we had a a wonderful spread of food and we couldn't eat it all because there was too much, but they celebrated and didn't stop singing to us for two hours, which was amazing. And and I was sobbing like a baby because it was just such a nice experience and a nice thing to do. It was just another small legacy project that Dawn and I wanted to do was to, to make a difference for women um, to, so that they could set up a business next to the school where their children went, you know. So that was fabulous. So that was in May. Um, so I did those two projects um, with work. But then I also did uh, a trip to Madrid with with Carly and Dan, my two children. Carly works with me, so she came on the cruise. Um, my son um, works really hard on the railway line as a welder. And we always like to try and take time away. And um, it was that we worked it out. It was the first time in eight years we'd all meet. The three of us have been away together abroad. We'd been away oh, in the UK, great. but not abroad. So, um, so yeah. that was really nice. And I think... I'm all about creating memories with friends and family, you know, with, with your loved ones. And, yeah. you know, life is to to just be and, and obviously enjoy the moment, you know. So uh, it's about creating memories with, with our friends and family. That's fabulous. Tracy, this was awesome to catch up with you. I really appreciate your, um, your business acumen and mostly your friendship. Um, and just the way you carry yourself through life. It's just a joy to see it. So I want to wish all of God's blessings on you, your family, and all of your careers moving forward. Oh, thank you so much for having me on, James. Really honored to be here today to serve your clients. So 
hopefully, uh, you know, they'll enjoy it. Hey, if you guys like what's going on here, please leave a great review in the Apple Podcasts. I've left a simple review process in the show notes and we'd really appreciate it. And also, don't be shy. Forward this to your best friend because you know they need it. Hey, if you need some coaching, hit up the link in the show notes. It's calendly.com forward slash dharmic. And you can take a little chance with me and I'll get you on your way. That's a wrap for me today. I'm your host, James Kevin O'Connor. So until the next time, when we meet again, I'll either see you on the socials or I'll see you from the stage. Ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery. If wishes were windows, I'd open one and find That freedom is really a simple state of mind So ride on, ride on, baby, won't you take a ride with me? Ride on, ride on, we can untangle all the mystery Ride on, ride on, baby, baby, you and I can find the key Ride on, ride on, we can unlock each other's destiny I taste the breeze of freedom, it's tingling on my tongue